Doki Fokies uh, Thunderhawk update then on the build. Today I have been taking off all of these lovely big old chunks of resin. So these are the gates um, where all the resin is poured into the moulds and then injection moulded and forced into the actual bits themselves. They're left on all the parts. Um, Basically because it's a wage that Forge World don't have to pay. And why would you pay a wage you don't have to? It's just business sense really. Um, so clip these off all of the major bits that I'm going to be working with today. And I'm going to be hanging on to these or possibly speaking to good old Templars Crusader 1. Because these big chunks of resin can make some fantastic terrain pieces. Tank traps, rubble, buildings. You can do a lot with them. So uh, we'll see if Brian wants them for any of his future builds. Otherwise, mine. So what have I been working with? Well, obviously the Thunderhawk. Two wings. Lower fuselage. Upper fuselage. Top gun port. Connecting section. Nose cone. Rear thruster cockpit. This is what I've been playing around with today folks. Um, so I've cleaned them up, I've uh, taken most of the resin gates off them, there are still some bits that I haven't got around to smoothing completely, but I've done a very basic dry fit to see how the whole thing goes together. Put it together, had a look where the gaps are, and as far as all the horror stories that I've heard about Thunderhawks, I think I've got off pretty lightly with this. There weren't too many severe gaps so I got out my precision resin adjustment tool, also known as a hairdryer, went to town on these and straightened a few bits out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the dry fit of the main body sections so you can see how they go together. So we are going to start with our lower fuselage. The lower fuselage, when you get it, you have to take some of the flash out of the doors and the rear access ramp. On the bottom here you've got the hollows for the landing gear and the main thruster. On the inside, front troop compartment, hollows where the wing's going in and you don't really see this back section because it has a, a wall built over it. So, this is where we're starting. First thing I did was take all the flash off take all the resin gates off, still need to smooth the back ever so ever so slightly and then took the hair dryer to it to straighten out for the worst part, it still comes in a tiny bit but it works for what I need it to. So, lower fuselage next section is the upper fuselage Okay, gates on here come into the back so you cut them here you want to leave this section on because we're going to hang something off that in a moment um, section for the tail to attach, the air brakes, the attack foils, locators for the gun port and the gun rail, sides, and this again had a little bit of a warp to it. Straighten that out nicely. On your lower fuselage, you can see this little rail, this little lip that runs across the whole thing. On the upper fuselage, the lip is reversed. And this just drops on like so. And if you've uh, taken your hairdryer to it and got rid of most of your gaps, it's actually a reasonably snug fit. This section here where it's a little messy, I'm not worried about because there's a wing that goes there. Quite nice. Here, there's a little bit of an overlap and a gap, but we're hanging something over there. Quite nice. Again, wing goes there. Not a bad fit after some treatment with the hairdryer. Wasn't perfect at first because this bottom section was bowed a little bit like that. So, stood the whole thing up, directed the hairdryer straight down into this gap which heats both sections together, and a little bit of pressure, and then let it cool once everything's all lined up. So, lower fuselage, upper fuselage. All right. Next connection part of the upper fuselage. 
this when I got it was quite warped. There's still, again, a little bit of a bend in it, but nothing crazy. The top section was bowed very well, very well, very, very much. Again, hit it with the hairdryer until it was nice and malleable. Straightened this top section up by popping one of my rulers up against it and then just pressing it down. And uh, on this section again, we have that lip which will hook over here. And we have these two locating tabs on the inside which will slot inside there. Like so. And again, after some tweaking with the hairdryer, very nice fit. Just a little bit of a gap here, tiny bit of green stuff, job jobbed. This also has two very small little nubs of resin just here, can you see? Which locate into these gaps there and there. Okay, up a fuselage so far. On the top here are these two little depressions that I pointed out earlier. In there fits the housing for the main armament of your Thunderhawk. So two blocks there into your two holes. That's your cannon housing. Again, tiny little gap across there. A little bit of green stuff, liquid green stuff, then some sandpaper to smooth it off. Job jobbed. On the back, we come back to this section here. I said we were going to hang something off. This is our rear booster. Our rear engine, our main thruster is going to go there. This run here lines up with this run there. This hollow inside hangs on to there. Okay. I'm going to hold that in place for the moment. One of the issues I had with this is this rail is normally perfectly rectangular, has quite a sharp edge to it. On the inside here, there's just this soft angle, so I've had to put a bit of a, a chamfer on here because before this sat quite proud. Now it follows the uh, line of the rest of the hull. Whee. Back sections done. The next section we're going to look at is our nose cone. Again, this was a little bit wonky, so I took the hairdryer to it, straightened it up, took the flash, took the gates off. Little depressions on the inside here and here. Location tabs there, and it hangs on. Again, when I first fit it, not a perfect fit. There was quite a lot of gaps, so what I did was as I built everything and put the next piece and the next piece and the next piece on, took the hairdryer to it as I was going and just fitted each piece to the next and it works quite well doing things that way. Last but not least over the top is your canopy and that's your Thunderhawk in a nutshell for the main body section. The canopy when you are doing it Normally these little bits here are full of horrible amounts of flash. When you're cutting and using a scalpel, as people that keep up on my uh, Facebook page will know, try not to stab yourself in the finger with a scalpel, it's, it's painful. Now in my unbagging video, they give you that little piece of plastic to fill these gaps. One thing I've noticed and put to a friend of mine about is they give you this lovely sheet of clear plastic but if you put it over the top, you lose these rivet details. If you want to put it on the inside, well, you don't have a smooth surface to put it on, which is a little bit annoying. If you're going to have a sealed Thunderhawk, it's not a main big problem. You can smooth all this out and just whack it on. For me, I found this wonderful, wonderful blog on the internet about a chap who's built a Thunderhawk, and he's built it in such a way the wings come off and the entire top section comes off so we can see all of the detail inside. I'm going to put the link to that blog in the description below. Go and check it out because it's amazing. And um, yeah, I'm going to build this Thunderhawk so that this whole top section comes up. So that what you'll have left in the front here 
is the cockpit section. You'll be able to see the interior through the doors, all the weapon racks, the cockpit section at the top, right the way back to those extra chairs in the housing. I want my Thunderhawk to be modular, to open, and I want to try and install lights in this as well. Because it's very dark in here when you open the ramps, so I want to put some little strip lights or something in. A challenge from Templar's Crusade, so should be pretty damned awesome. So let's just pop this back together. That onto there, that onto there, that into there, that and whoop. Last but not least are the wings. Now I'm only going to show you the one wing. So this is the left hand wing. You can tell it's left hand wing because you've got the hollow for the bolter on the bottom there. And left hand wing has this little section cut away. Whereas the right hand wing against the body is completely flush. Now the wing, I had some trouble locating it onto here. I'm going to disassemble everything to show you quickly. Wing location. So it has that little cutaway there, doesn't on that side, it has these two little runs there. These runs are for these little locator nubs on the bottom of the wing. Also on the wing are these two sections here. These fit around these collars here on the underside of the engine and on the top side of the engine. When I was fitting this and doing the dry fit earlier, it wasn't a very good fit because this collar here was displaced too far back. So what I've had to do is just take away a little bit of material here so that it all hooks in nicely. Okay. dry fit on the wing. Let's put the top section back on again. So, I'm very very tempted to have the wings removable because, well, I would quite like to be able to transport this easily. That would be nice. So I have the top section as modular that everything comes away, have the wings as removable, Bob's your uncle, and I'll be laughing. So, this has been looking at dry fitting everything for the main body of the Thunderhawk. What I need to do next, obviously, is take these Aquilas off, put a few details across it, and I'm going to start looking at building the cockpit section next and dry fitting everything together there. But hopefully that gives you a nice starting point so you can see how it's going to go together. And if anyone else out there is brave enough to take on a Thunderhawk, I really hope this series helps you because it's a little journal for me so that I don't go completely insane. And it's a little how-to to help everyone out there in the community because the instructions aren't phenomenal. Take care, folks. I realise this has been a long, rambly video, but I will see you again soon for more Thunderhawky goodness. Bye.